Friends, you're very welcome to this, the final night prayer of the Four Corners Festival, 10th anniversary festival, our 10th festival. This is the final breath of our festival this year. And we will breathe as one little community as we have done online all week. Today was a busy day in the festival. It began with a morning service from Grosvenor House at 10 a.m. this morning. And we had Archbishop uh, Justin Welby speaking on members of our own team and the fantastic Belfast Community Gospel Choir. And then we moved to St. Peter's Cathedral this evening in Belfast when Archbishop Justin gave us his keynote address. And he encouraged us. I think he blessed us. And he certainly inspired us to continue to build peace. I was, I mean, he said, no, peace building isn't done in some grandiose act. It's not about uh, big famous people doing stuff. It's about you and me, just people continuing on the road to peace. He really inspired us. And we had Dana Masters singing this evening as well. If you haven't heard of or heard Dana Masters, D-A-N-A, -A, Dana Masters, you have to check her out. Just it was the most beautiful, soulful, spiritual singing that St. Peter's Cathedral may ever have heard. It was just unbelievable. And if you're still about and want to come to the festival next year, you are almost guaranteed to see more of Dana. Thank God Steve got in straight away and booked her for next year in conversation with Steve Stockman. So we all have to keep well and healthy and be here next year to, to hear Dana. So that has been our day in the festival, our final day, a very fitting day for our final day because it was brilliant. And now I'm going to hand you over to my partner uh, who's been with me all week, or I have been with her all week, Michaela Barber, who's going to lead us now. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Richard, would you mind putting Carol on the spotlight as well? That would be great. So today we are joined by Carol. Uh, Kane, so wonderful, wonderful artist. I'm really excited that you guys get to hear a little bit more about her story. So, Carol, would you mind just introducing yourself, telling us where you're from or where you are right now, and then just a little bit about your background as well? Okay, thanks, Michaela. Um, yeah, well, I am Carol Kane. I I come from Portrush, um, that's where I grew up, but I currently live in Port Glenone. That's where I am now, Mid-Ulster. And uh, I trained as a weaver. I, I did constructive, constructive textiles in Dundee. And um, I guess I continue to build. I see my work very much as, as still being a builder one way or another, whether that's within community or within fabric um, or within art practice. Um, I, my work works, sometimes it's more arty, sometimes it's more peace building. I work uh, community arts, community education. Um, and uh, I'm freelance, but I have two kind of core pieces of work that I work for Community Arts Partnership for CAP based in Belfast and also for the Jethro Centre in Lurgan as a Good Relations Project Officer. So I, I develop projects. I really like, mm -hmm. you know, working on projects, something that I can initiate, um, roll out, finish off and uh, yeah, that's and work with community in the middle of all of, of all of that. Um, so that's that's really about me. That's great. And so for those of you who aren't aware, Carol is actually the one who curated all of the artists for this week. So thank you so much for doing that. And now would you like to share just a little bit about your experience doing that? Like, who'd you bring in? How you're connected with the festival? Just like those types of things. Um, sure. Well, it, it has been you know it's been a fantastic week I really enjoyed it really got a lot out of it and um, it's been a lovely experience being able to work with the team of artists who have been on board um, everyone has been really very cooperative so uh, so thank you to Four Corners for allowing that to happen 
um, and for uh, being able to let us feed into this kind of uh, meditative time. Um, it's been, you know, I guess the opportunity to be able to share, share visually um, and to have an input that is not just words or music, as is very often the case within uh, a church or a faith-based context, has just been very precious. Um, and has been certainly uh, very helpful as far as even my own experience of prayer has been concerned. So I, mm. I can't speak for everybody, um, but it, it's been great. So thank you for that. Well, thank you, Carol. I know Jim and I both feel this way that the art has really enriched this experience for us and for the viewers as well. So thank you so much for all the work that you've done to bring this all together. Uh, Richard, would you be able to actually spotlight Carol's work now? So Carol, I don't know if you want to talk us through a little bit about the art that you made for this week. Um, it what like your process was and just like what inspired you to make this piece. Sure. Um, well, as I said, I, I trained as a weaver. So quite recently I've been working in clay and I've been working with the, the surface, the texture really of, of fabric. And what that looks like in in clay um, and there are a lot of similarities in the process um, because uh, we've done a lot of handmade paper in the past so because it's quite a fibrous clay is quite fibrous as is is fabric and textiles um, there's it's almost as if there's a, a common language in the process mm -hmm. but my work is always process orientated and I always think about what you know I, I don't tend to know at the beginning how a piece is going to turn out. So I, I just kind of work, I trust the process, surrender mm. to the process and, and work really in faith that something is going to come about or something is going to appear as a result of, of that explorative process. Um, and uh, I, I guess I'm, I, I'm always very conscious of the resources that I'm working with, the limitations um, that are within the material or the time or whatever um, and I, I'm, I'm always very keen to find transformation where does transformation mm -hmm. actually happen so and and that then leads into the peace building work as well building peace is one thing um, but the transformation is where change actually happens within the community mm -hmm. so um, it's around trying to be more uh, solution orientated rather than problem focused um, and how that in the transformation is the bridge um mm. but this piece um it's really the top third of the piece that is kind of the main part of the, the piece that I, I've been thinking about as far as the theme is concerned because it's thinking about what is the common ground and the common good so in order to be in that common space um I or we have to give something up in order to be there uh, to be present with other people so it has been within my kind of my training and my background, um, we would be working on the basis really of, of not holding on to things, which would be quite countercultural for us mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland. But what happens when we release the tension that wee bit? What happens when we, um, we even give over some things or, um, and is it, in doing so, there isn't a void for us to be scared of because as soon as we loosen our attention, something else arrives and we get something else. Mm. So I, I wonder within our, our context of holding on, are we actually missing out on something fresh and new that might arrive if we just relaxed ourselves and relaxed um, our 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 desire to hold the past or hold on to, to what we seem to have as being so precious, what would happen mm. if, we, if we released that? Wow, that's such a beautiful visual, just that loosely holding on, almost holding on just with open hands, which it seems kind of like a paradox, but wow, that is beautiful. So thank you for sharing that. What's something that you hope this piece will bring to the festival and bring to the people that are here tonight? What's something that you hope that they would take away? Um, well, I guess I, I hope that they would, uh, that they would just take the consideration, of, I guess maybe what, even just the imagination, the imagining 
or the reimagining that um, we were talking about in the service this evening. What, what would it? What might it be like if we can l- just loosen our tension mm. um, and loosen kind of the anxiety around that? What might it be like? And can we imagine? Mm. Can we even start to think about that, or to start to even play with that in a in a similar kind of process as I've just kind of described? Um, and another kind of concept within expressive arts kind of uh, principles that I would be working with is also about staying on the surface rather than always digging deep. And when we dig mm-hmm. deep, we we get stuck. We can get stuck in in the in the ground or stuck in the earth. Um, but if we stay on the surface, uh, is there anything that we can explore or play with? just simply mm. by um, by having that lighter touch. So yeah. I guess for people to, to take that away just in their in their ponderings in their mm. thinking um, and and to play just with those ideas and see where that might take them. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Carol. Thank you for all your work again. So I don't know if uh, our participants tonight would like to go to the chat and maybe you put a few comments of how Carol's piece moved you. I see we already have one from Fergus. Thank you, Fergus. It says, the weaved and weft of life transforming individual experiences into communal common ground and common good. That's beautiful, Fergus, thank you. And Neville contemplating what the medium of clay conveys regarding transformation in forge and fire and what it might convey about holding on in the fragility and rigidity of the medium. That's great. And just to thank you as well, Michaela, and also to Jim um, for your leading in these sessions as well, and, and to the artists for being part of this, um, because you've, you've done it very sensitively. So, so thank you for that. Appreciate that. Thank you, Gail. Another comment here from Betsy, an artist can't hold on too much. They have to let go and let the piece be what it will be. That's very beautiful as well. Getting stuff is going too deep from Jenny. A bird grasping onto a branch cannot take flight. Mm. That's from David. Mm. Now learning to let go, to be able to move on or move forward. So I invite you all to keep using the chat and keep thinking here um, just throughout the night. And thank you so much for how much you all have engaged this past week. We have some more coming in, space to release, uh, surrender to the process, knowing how to lose. Thank you all. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Jim to lead us in one final prayer for the week. Thank you, Michaela, thank you. I'd love to hold this piece to explore the surface with my fingers or something about the curiosity that Justin Welby was talking about. Lovely, yes. Okay, I think, Rich, if we just leave uh, Carol's piece up as the spotlighted piece just for the rest of my prayer time, that would be good. And friends, feel free to focus on Esther, or Esther, sorry, Carol's piece, or close your eyes and undo whatever is right for you. Going to focus on a few of the themes that Carol gave us there. First theme I'm going to focus on is to release the tension. Come up quite a bit, just letting go, release the tension. So I invite you in order to do that, to become just aware of your body as you sit there in whatever way you do. We're going to bring our attention intentionally to different parts of our body. Feel your feet on the floor. If you can, I invite you to wriggle your toes inside your footwear. Do you feel that? Feel that friction? That can only happen because you're here. It's now. 
You're in the present moment. Move up now and bring your attention to your thighs. A lot of us carry tension in our thighs. They get tired. They're big old muscles. They work hard. So bring your attention to your thighs. Notice if there is tiredness or tension there. And here's a little trick that I learned a while back. Small movements can make a big difference. Small movements can make a big difference. So if you find that you have a little bit of tension in your thighs, just move your legs slightly and allow your leg to become heavier and allow some of that tension to move away. If you still feel tension in your thighs, make another small move. It can make a big difference. And as you do that, just experience the tension in your thighs easing a little. Move up and bring your attention to your tummy. Lots of us bring tension and anxiety and worry into our tummy, into our guts. Just become aware of your tummy and allow your tummy to relax. Just be aware now, you may not even have been aware, maybe you were clenching your tummy muscles a bit. Just make a small difference, a small movement and allow your tummy muscles to relax. And as your tummy relaxes, allow the tension to flow away. Become aware now of your tummy and your lower body as one unit. Become aware of the tension you had been carrying flowing away and your body becoming heavier on the chair that you find yourself in. Move up now to your chest. And again, many of us carry tension and worry and we hold it in our rib cage and right round the back there, your kind of mid thoracic area down behind your lungs. Just bring your attention to that part of your body. And maybe by using your breath, particularly the out breath, allow any tension that you've been carrying there in your, your rib cage, your back, just allow your out breath to carry that tension away. Release the tension. Allow your breath, your out breath, to take the tension away. Move up now to your shoulders and your neck. Oh my goodness, so many of us carry tension here. Small movements can make a big difference. Just make small movements now in your neck, your shoulders. Become aware of how you can relax your shoulders and let them fall slightly to the ground. And as you do that, feel a sense of heaviness and relaxation come over. Your shoulders just make a small movement downward. Use your breath again for this. Allow your out breath to be the moment when your shoulders move down. And a sense of Relaxation comes over your body. One final focus, and this is our jaw. We carry a lot of tension here, the temporomandibular joint. So you might even, if it's, if it's your thing, you might even bring your fingers up, two fingers either side, and just massage just at the corner of your jaw at the back here. Just feel those muscles. If you talk as much as me, those muscles do a lot of work. Just give them a little rub. And as you do that, just become aware 
of the tension you may have been holding in your jaw relaxing. Allow your hands to fall to your side. Return now to your breath again and allow your out breath to be a breath that brings relaxation. Bring awareness to your body as one unit. And as you breathe out, you release the tension in your body as one unit. Relaxation is your natural state. Allow your body to return to its natural state. Continue to breathe and allow relaxation to wash over you as we move to a second theme that Carol gave us, which is letting go. What is God calling you to let go of at this time? I invite you to ritualize this letting go that God may be calling you to and to ritualize it simply in your breath. Let each out breath be a letting go of those things that you do not need anymore. Small movements can make a big difference. Continue to breathe, focusing on your out breath and asking for the grace to let go of those things you don't need. Remembering that even a small movement can make a big difference. Our final theme that Carol gave us was one of transformation. Again, let's use our breath to understand this in some way. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Continue to breathe in this way if it is comfortable. Notice that your breath on your in-breath is cold. Feel the cold as you breathe in. Now feel that your out-breath is warm. That which is cold becomes warm. It is transformed. In the same way that the air that you breathe in is taken in and transformed inside of you in a little miracle every time you breathe and you breathe out what you don't need. There is transformation in every breath. Our bodies tell the story of God's transformative work in our lives. Every breath can be a witness to God's transformative power. Every breath can be a prayer to God to transform that which we need to be transformed. Continue to breathe, aware of the transformation that happens in each breath. And call something to your mind now where you experienced transformation. Where you witnessed it in yourself or in someone you know or love. The person who bravely overcame mental health difficulties.
the addict who got clean. The old hurt that was forgiven. The enemy who was embraced. The sickness that was healed. That thing that you didn't think would work out, that worked out better than you would have thought. Call it to mind now. Keep reaching. And as you find things where you've experienced transformation, allow yourself to be grateful. Perhaps surprise yourself at the things that you can now acknowledge. Maybe things you never thought of before. Perhaps all of a sudden you see that transformation is all around us. And be grateful for it. In the context of our festival, people crisscrossing across all sorts of lines that would have been dividing lines in the past. Physical, psychological, spiritual, religious, dividing and divisive lines transformed. We, friends, are a witness of that tonight. Our little community. Community who witnessed to God's transformative power. Every time you breathe, you can bear witness to God's transformative power, and every breath can be a prayer. Around the world, let's take three breaths together as a community. One, two, Three. Bring awareness back to the room that you're in. Richard, if you could spotlight me now instead of the piece of art, that would be lovely. If there's one thing that will bring you back to earth, it's my big bake spotlighted on your Zoom. So we're back, we're back to reality. This is the last breath of our festival. This is our closing. This is us being sent out. Tonight in the cathedral, we prayed a prayer of sending. So we are all being sent to be the presence of God's love, joy, mercy, peace and reconciliation in the world. I want to thank a few people. Uh, firstly, behind the scenes, Richard is making things happen tonight. Richard, I want to thank you and the rest of the team for being with us all week. Um, Carol was saying, as others have said, Carol was saying tonight, it's just lovely to have had the option of being there in person. And if you couldn't make it, just to be able to, to be there online and, and not even just to watch it tonight, you can watch it tomorrow and you can come back. So that wouldn't have happened without our friends at Accidental Theatre. Perhaps as, as I'm doing this, Richard, will you spotlight Carol's contact details? So just have a wee look there. Anybody who wants to contact Carol. So I want to thank you, Richard, and, and the team. Carol, I want to thank you uh, for this wonderful piece of art that you brought and for curating our artists and our pieces of art this week. Indeed, I want to thank our artists uh, tonight, our artists for, for the week, uh, for being here and for bringing all of the, the artwork uh, that they did. Martin McGill is sending me messages. I don't know what it says. And Martin, if it's something important, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to, to see it for a while. Who knows? So yes, thank you, all of the artists. Uh, I want to thank, as just as one of us, <clears throat> all of our team. We've all worked really hard, so um, it's been great 
just acknowledge all of our team. In particular, I want to thank my partner, who I have joined all week, Michaela Barber. Rich, will you put Michaela on there? Michaela, take yourself off mute and come on in. Thank you, Jim. It's been a great joy. Ah, listen, Michaela, it has been wonderful to work with you. It's been a real joy, a real partnership between us. And it has been, it has really benefited not only me, but it's benefited our people uh, who came all week. We're really fortunate to have you with us for our festival. So thank you so much. Uh, And there's probably loads of other people I should thank, but I'm just going to finish by thanking all of you, uh, all of you people. So let's take the spotlight off completely and we'll go back to being a community. So many of you came every night. Some of you came some nights. Maybe even there's somebody here tonight that's here for the first night. Who knows? But in, in any way that you came, you were our community. So go to your gallery view if you can so that you can see all your beautiful bakes, as I say in this part of the world all your beautiful faces. And Richard, if you would, would you uh, give people the ability to back to take themselves off mute? So we're going to, if you want to come off mute, you can come off mute now. And as we've done these last nights, let's just say good night and God bless to each other. Susan, good night and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.